Hello to everyone from wherever you're joining this webinar today, from your kitchen, your living room, getting ready on the site, or even taking care of your children. No worries, this webinar is automatically on mute and no one can hear or see us. See you. So in this scenario, which most of us are in right now, the quarantine is exactly what we want to talk about today. GDPR risks in the teleworking. So I'm Lisa Hofmann. I'm the Chief of Legal Operations here at Pride Attacks. And I'm having as guest today, Simon Hall. He is a privacy consultant and a DPO coach. Simon was IBM's first data privacy officer for UK and Ireland and chair of the EMEA Privacy Review Board from 2007 to 2011. Furthermore, he is an ex KPMG privacy consultant and now active as freelance privacy consultant. Welcome, Simon. Second, I would like to introduce Tracy Hurst. Tracy is an HR director at Practical People, an experienced HR professional who is a chartered fellow at the CIPD. Tracy helps leaders establish ownership of duties within the workforce by developing accountability and responsibility. So thank you for uh, having you here. Thank you so much for joining <coughs> and giving us valuable insights. So um, what are we going to speak about today? We are going to speak about GDPR risks in teleworking and if your company is ready. So how do we implement remote work successfully in a company and how to remote work relates to data protection. <laughs> if we speak about the several risks of teleworking and also security measures for data protection. Furthermore, we will also identify some technical measures for information security. So let's start with Tracy and some top tips for working from home. Tracy, can you give us some insights here as an HR expert? Thank you, Lisa, I can. So first of all, we need to set up a designated workspace. So separate space for yourself to work in, some way where you can focus on tasks without being distracted and set up everything you need for a normal working day. Make sure you have all the technology you need. This includes a reliable internet connection, required hardware and software, access to support networks and files, and importantly, knowledge of how to get IT support. Get dressed might seem like a common sense one, but very important. Changing into working clothes will help you mentally switch on to productive work mode. It will also help you distinguish between home working and home life. Write a daily to-do list. Set out a list of realistic, achievable tasks to keep you focused. Know when to step away from your desk. Be clear about when your working day begins and ends and take regular breaks to refresh. It's easy to let yourself always be on when your home and office are in the same place. Stay in conversation. Contribute regularly to your team chats, group emails, so you don't drop off the radar. Ask about what people are working on and share what's on your plate too. Foster good relationships. Make time for non-work chats as you would in the workplace and use video calls to maintain face-to-face -face contact. Be clear in your communication. Speaking in person gives you visual and audio cues that help your communication. Speaking remotely removes a lot of that extra information so make your communication extra clear and concise. Ask for support when needed. Speak out when you need assistance. Further training and support. Your manager colleagues and you are part of one big team and should be supporting each other, even remotely. Make remote working work for you. Change where you sit, put on some music, whatever helps you work, and enjoy the perks of working from home. No commute or uncomfortable shoes and all your home comforts, but be mindful of not overusing the biscuit tin. So the next top tips are on managing remote teams. So first of all, 
we need to agree ways of working together. So make sure every team member is clear about how they will work together remotely, how you will keep each other updated, and how frequently. Show the big picture, but be prepared to be flexible. Remind your team about the big picture and how their work fits in. If some team members can't carry out all of their usual functions, consider skills they can lend to others to, be, to help them meet their goals. Set expectations and trust your team. Be clear about mutual expectations and trust your team to get on without micromanaging them. Focus on results for your business rather than specific activity. Make sure your team have the support and equipment they need. This includes any coaching they might need to use online systems and work remotely. Keep your calendar visible and maintain a virtual open door policy for everyone. Have a daily virtual huddle. This is essential for keeping connected as a team to check on each other's well-being and workflow and keep on track. It needn't be long, but regularity is key. Keep the rhythm of regular one-to-ones and team meetings. This maintains a sense of structure and continuity. Share information and encourage your team to do the same. Opportunities to pick, pick up information in passing are more limited when working remotely. Share appropriate updates or learning from other meetings and projects and invite your team to do the same. Tell your feedback and communications. People can be more sensitive if they are feeling isolated or anxious. So take this into account when talking or writing. Communicate regularly, not just when things go wrong, whether it's information, praise or criticism. Listen closely and read between the lines. Not being in the same room means you don't have extra information from your body language or tone to get the sense of what people are thinking or feeling, home in on what's not being said and ask questions to clarify. Foster good relationships and well-being. Make time for social conversations. This increases rapport and eases communication between people who may not meet often. It also reduces the feeling of isolation. So the final tips are on effective online meetings. To embrace video calling, we are all having to do this now. Being present and seeing each other is an important part of keeping connected. Don't hide away or do other work while people are talking. Use headsets or earphones. This will give better sound quality. Speak directly into the mic and remember to mute yourself when not speaking. Speak clearly and steadily. This will help ensure everyone can understand you and try to adapt your voice to keep people interested and engaged. Establish etiquette guidelines. Agree a system to give everyone a voice. Arrange hands up signals to agree who speaks next and use chat functions to allow everyone to contribute. Repeat the question. So the chat um, of the presentation should repeat the question they ask to ensure all participants are aware of the original question. Repeating the questions in writing within the chat box could also provide additional clarity. Use names and give context. When responding to chat comments, repeat the relevant remarks and make clear who you're responding to. So don't just say, yes, Jane, that's right, because others may not have heard what Jane said. So repeat the comment that Jane has made as well as addressing her. Keep slides simple. Keep it to a single thought per slide to help participants understand and focus on what is being said. It's better to have more slides with fewer things on them. Keep slides visual. Your participants may be joining from a mobile device and wordy slides will be tough to read. Anchor your presentation on relevant image-based slides. Engage participants regularly. 
It's hard to simply listen online for a long time. Invite participants to give comments or ask questions. Use tools such as chat and polls. And finally, be explicit about actions and summarize. Spell out clearly any actions that need to be taken and by whom. Summarize meeting takeaways and circulate notes promptly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. I mean, we are all in this situation right now. We are all in this together. So thank you so much for this valuable insights and tips we can all use, especially the ones for employees were really interesting for me because yes, we all have these meetings remotely right now and we all can very much relate. So thank you so much for that. My pleasure. So now um, Simon, I would like um, to turn to you and look at homeworking uh, and how it can affect people and organizations in terms of data protection. Sorry, I skipped a slide. So. Yes, and how it can affect people and organizations in the terms of data protection and security. So does this widespread homeworking we have right now create some new risks? And if so, what should we be doing and how can we manage them? So this is a really interesting topic for me, especially in the field of um, data security and privacy. So um, here we are, and I have especially several questions. Um, first of all, what do you think employers should be doing to maintain security with so many employees right now working from home? Uh, thanks, Lisa. Um, I promised I wasn't going to do this. I'm, I'm going to give the, uh, the standard uh, privacy advisory answer, which is it <laughs> depends. Um, some organizations, uh, for some organizations, working from home has been um, a, a habit uh, for many years. I've been a, a mobile or home worker for um, pretty much the last 20 years, um, most half my working life. Um, so those organisations, they're all already having all the, um, they've already got all the uh, mobile infrastructure in place. Um, so it's mainly just a question of, of, of scaling that up. Um, uh, then there are uh, obviously many organisations uh, that have been operating bring your own device for years. Uh, so they should already have um, BYOD policies and measures in place, um, assuming they were getting BYOD uh, right in the first place, which um, as we probably all know, hasn't always been the case. Um, so that really leaves the rest, and these are the ones I wanna focus on. These are the, the thousands of uh, mostly small, medium-sized businesses, uh, organizations um, that have little or no experience of, of mobile or home working. So, uh, so really, the, the, these are the employers um, that, that I wanna focus on. Um, before I just go on to answer this question about what employers um, should be, uh, to be doing to maintain security. I just want to be clear that we're, we're just talking about security for privacy here, uh, not not security in, in its wider sense. Um, so we're really focusing just on those aspects of, of security that uh, that uh, in, enable uh, organisations to ensure that we're providing adequate safeguards around our processing of, of personal information. Um, so there are essentially three areas um, of security risk that uh, employers need to think about. Um, Remote access is the first. Uh, use of personal devices is the second. Uh, and then physical security. Uh, obviously, when stuff is no longer on site, uh, it's, no, it's kind of out of sight. So uh, um, we need to, need to think about how you, how you secure things in a, different, uh, in a different environment. So let's have a look at um, uh, remote access firstly. Um, I think for, for any organization that has, uh, has had to send uh, or has allowed uh, its employees to, to go and work from home um, in any, in any sort of significant numbers, um, the, the big risk is around just the, the, the large scale uncontrolled uh, remote access to, um, uh, to, to your company networks uh, and systems. Um, need to think about uh, whose Wi-Fi are they gonna be using? I, mean, I don't know about you, but I've got I don't know, Sky or BT or something that most of most uh, most of us um, I'm sure will have that. But long, you know, I have some of my you know, my, my kids, for example, who are in their twenties uh, now. They're getting to the stage where they are getting these sort of Wi-Fi's. But in the past, they would they would take any old Wi-Fi that's going free. If they lived above a chip shop that had free Wi-Fi, they'd log into um, the, the chip shop free Wi-Fi. So um, we've got to really think about uh, about the sort of Wi-Fi they're using. Um, another risk which uh, which 
probably a lot of people haven't haven't really thought about. Um, if you've heard of pineapples, um, I heard about pineapples recently at a, at a conference and uh, gave me quite a shock. Um, uh, a pineapple is basically a device that can uh, can hack into um, uh, Wi-Fi and, and basically create a, a fake Wi-Fi um, uh, uh, capability. Um, and the example we were given was uh, that a guy just drives up to the uh, the perimeter of an airport uh, with a with one of these pineapples uh, in his car and his boot, and uh, turns it on and just waits for the planes to come in. And of course, as soon as the plane lands, everyone puts their mobile phones on, and the, these pineapples just suck up. Uh, everything that's on them. So um, one of the things about uh, if there are bad guys wandering around, now that so many people, especially senior people, are uh, working from home, then, uh, for example, in, uh, in, ap in apartment buildings, prestigious apartment buildings, they could be a really good uh, feeding ground for, for uh, um, bad actors with pineapple users. Um, so just making sure that people uh, are, are aware that uh, they really need to make sure they're definitely uh, uh, logging on to their own Wi-Fi or, or, or to a secure Wi-Fi. Um, the, the, the answer here usually, for, in, in my experience, um, has always been virtual private networks, VPNs, uh, where the employer uh, basically distributes um, uh, these tokens and the, 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 there's a code which you, you use, your user ID password, and then you also have to do this, um, uh, this third factor authentication uh, using the uh, the code on your on your VPN, which is constantly changing, um, the, these networks basically create a, a secure environment. Um, as, um, I'm, I'm not into the security security aspect of this, just the privacy side of it. Um, but it is really important to make sure that um, that you're managing the risks around the remote access. Um, and then I talked about um, uh, the use of personal devices. Um, a lot of people working in the office uh, uh, day, day to day. Um, will not be using laptops. A lot of them will be using desktops. And when they're sent home to work, it may not always be um, uh, possible or appropriate to send them home with a great big desktop machine in their, um, uh, under their arm as they get back on the train uh, for the last time before they go home and work for a few weeks uh, from home. Um, the use of personal devices has, has really caused, caused trouble ever since uh, uh, this BYOD idea was um, uh, was invented. Um, it was it certainly hasn't been as much fun as the old BYOB. Any of you who are old enough to remember the 70s uh, will remember that no party invitation ever came uh, without the letters BYOB, bring your own bottle uh, on the bottom of it. Um, but bring YOD uh, is, I can say, a rather more um, significant issue. Raises some uh, some 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 real risks. Um, for organizations, I said earlier, organizations that have been practicing BYOD um, uh, for quite some time, um, the key to it is, is to have the uh, appropriate software put onto those devices. If you're just sending somebody home and saying, use your own uh, laptop, um, you, know, you can email us from here and, 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 and just, just carry on working, we'll, we'll send you documents that you can work on. Um, the, 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 the lack of control um, you're going to have over security is is utterly unacceptable in, in, by any by any measure. Um, the uh, the answer again is um, as opposed to the, the uh, virtual pro private network, the um, virtual machine software VMware, um, AirWatch. Uh, a lot of you will probably have heard of. Um, many of you may be may be using. Uh, Good was another one we used to use when I was at KPMG. I'm not sure if they're still going. I haven't seen much about them recently, um, but I'm sure there are other products on the market. Um, but effectively, the, the, the idea of, of being able to, to install on somebody's uh, personal phone, laptop, uh, tablet, a, uh, a virtual machine within that, a, a, like a separate drive, um, which can then effectively uh, be brought within the, uh, the firewall, within the, um, uh, the, the environment of, uh, and the security environment. Of the um, of the employer, so uh, again, say with with you, so if if you are relying on people using their personal devices for the first time, just re just really think about um, how they're going to be using them, what information they're going to be using them uh, for, how they're going to be working, um, what information they're going to be transmitting from them, and so on. And then physical um, security. There's some good news. There's some good news on the physical security side um, because <laughs> nobody is leaving their laptops on trains or in wine bars anymore, are they? Um, uh, that's it. That's really that's, that's the end of the good news. Um, 
I don't know what I don't know whether burglary rates are going up or down uh, at the moment, um, but if there are a lot more uh, bits of expensive kit in people's houses, uh, then I guess we all uh, ought to be aware, and employers certainly need to be aware, that um, that when a piece of uh, uh, of of, um, of company kit is now sitting in somebody's house as opposed to in in our um, our office, which is protected by CCTV and locked doors and security guards and dogs outside, um, that isn't going to be the case anymore. We're, we're going to have bits of kit all over the countryside, um, uh, sitting on coffee tables, desks, beds, um, uh, and we really need to make sure that uh, that employees understand um, what the risks are and do something about it. So this is a really good opportunity to dig out your acceptable use policy. Um, uh, it's, I've got to say, it's something I haven't really dug out for a while. Um, so I just pulled a couple out the other day and started looking at them. And um, there's, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. But, um, but, but for this particular uh, scenario, with so many people working from home, I think it's a really good idea to pull out that acceptable use policy um, and just uh, strip it out of all the stuff that isn't really, really immediately relevant um, for right now, and just turn it into a, uh, a brief piece of guidance that you can um, you can send out to all your employees, just with the basics, like um, you know, if you if you're going out for your run, your walk, or your cycle, you're going out shopping, um, don't just leave your laptop on the desk in your living room. Uh, you hide it. Keep, keep, Keep a, a, a safe, hidey place somewhere um, in your house where you can leave uh, company equipment and documents um, uh, when, when they're not in use. Um, uh, I, I think just generally uh, speaking about, uh, about this whole homeworking thing, um, I think it's worth bearing in mind that uh, this is a, a, a giant experiment um, uh, in mobile and homeworking. Um, life and work life is just never going to be the same again, but we are going to... Um, yes, there's some risks and stuff, but there are going to be an awful lot of advantages which come out of this, and uh, a lot of organisations uh, are going to start embracing um, home working in, in ways that they've just never done before, and whole new sectors are going to find find ways of making stuff working. Um, so, so when uh, as an employer, when you're looking to um, to put in place things like VPNs and VMware and and, um, and maybe buy buy a whole bunch more um, laptops to, to issue to your um, uh, to your employees just consider that that um, that when this is over th th this isn't necessarily just going to be a a, a, uh, um, a, a temporary uh, temporary arrangement you've got to make a big investment you know, for a, for a very short term problem um, I don't think it is going to be that at all I think uh, that any investments that organizations make now in home working, uh, I think 90% of those are going to be uh, maintained afterwards. So this isn't going to be wasted money. Um, and uh, when the pandemic uh, ends and we all uh, return to the new normal, um, I think a lot of you are going to keep on keep on with those arrangements. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think yeah, we at Pride Attack here we had a lot of demands for, especially what you said, like the acceptable use policy or amendments for contracts for working from home. So yes, I think um, we will go on working more from home and a lot of people also like embrace that. They really like that. So thank you uh, for uh, speaking about the employers. Um, before um, it comes to my question for the employees, um, at the beginning, I forgot to tell everybody that you can, of course, ask questions to our experts. We have here the question function directly. Um, you can find it in the slide bar. And of course, if you watch um, this webinar later on, you can send them to my email address, which you can find on the second slide. So just um, this about the questions. And now just go on from the employers to the employees. Um, and what about the people? Yeah, the people who find themselves right now working from home, what do they need uh, to be thinking about in terms of security and privacy? Um. Before I answer that, sorry, I, you referred to us as experts a moment ago, and and uh, I, I always get very nervous when anybody uses the word expert around me because uh, I just remember a long time ago it was a joke that the definition of an expert is that an ex is a has been and a spurt is a drip under pressure. So um, it's a word that I, um, <laughs> I, I, I I take as a compliment, but uh, uh, it doesn't sit well with me. Anyway, um, so homeworkers, what do we need to do? Um, I think as a homeworker, uh, I need to first of all I need to look around my house and just compare it with my office uh, in terms of of the, um, the sort of the facilities and the security. Um, I need to kind of do this conscious comparison. Um, 
So, for example, uh, I look around me and uh, there are no security uh, officers um, doing desk sweeps, checking to make sure that I've got a clear desk. So, so that means I'm going to have to um, keep a clear desk myself. Um, I know we all trust our, our, our partners and our loved ones and our, our growing up and grown up children, uh, whoever else may be in the household uh, with us at the moment. We, we need to remember these are not authorized. Uh, the, these people are not authorized to see any any information, um, uh, that, that not, you know, not just personal information. They're not authorized to see anything uh, that comes out of my company. So um, I, I do need to make sure that, that w where, I set up, where I set up my workstation, um, uh, that, that people, uh, other people in the household can't, just simply can't see stuff uh, on my screen. I'm not suggesting that my screen is always full of, of, um, uh, of, of confidential or personal um, confidential material or personal information, but um, but it, it will happen. It's just something we need to bear in mind. And that also goes for, um, for example, if we have if we have brought a, a, a laptop home and uh, it's the first laptop in the household, for example, and there are small children around, there's obviously going to be a temptation to, you know, Daddy, can I play on the um, uh, play on the laptop? Um, no, you can't. Is the answer. Um, we we tend not to have uh, filing cabinets in our houses, uh, and very often we're not going to have lockable drawers. Uh, so it, I, I'm going to need somewhere safe um, to to store my laptop and, and papers. I mentioned mentioned it earlier. Having even if it's just a a, a hidden space, it's better than uh, it's better than be, being being openly available. Um, but somewhere, just uh, I need to find somewhere that I can put my um, laptop and papers when I'm not uh, when I'm not using them. Um, I've um, very likely got a printer. Um, uh, I may or may not have a cross threader. Uh, if I have a printer, how secure is it? Um, I, I, I think the first thing is just I need to avoid printing if I can. Um, uh, just just don't don't do it. If it's absolutely essential, then I've, I've got to make sure that I've got some means of, of disposing of this um, of, the, of that paper when I've uh, uh, when I've finished with it. Um, and it, if it really comes to it, then if necessary, again, just hiding it somewhere, locking it away somewhere, um, and then taking it back to the company, taking it back to the office um, uh, when I return to work. But um, the idea of, of creating um, uh, print um, confidential paperwork uh, while you're working from home just doesn't sit well. So, so as an employee, I think I'll just try and uh, minimize that. Um, I need to recognize that um, uh, I think uh, we're all much more lax, aren't we? Um, we need to we need to recognise that um, with our our own laptops, our own phones, our own uh, tablets, we tend not to have the same level of password and security, and um, you know, we don't encrypt them and this sort of thing. Um, so we need to recognise that there is a difference between between my company's um, security standards and my security standards, um, you know, my personal security standards, and that my standards uh, are not good enough. Uh, that they, that they, I, I really have to um, make sure I understand and follow as closely as, as is possible in the circumstances, um, uh, that, that I really, really try and stick to uh, the company's um, security standards and, and, and not my own. Um, and, and that's, uh, and that's especially, I think, if uh, if I'm using my own laptop for company work, that's something I've got to really be aware of. Yeah, absolutely. Totally right. We all have to check ourselves there. And yeah, also make sure now that nobody checks our laptops. Yeah. And we saw right now from your answer um, that it's very clearly a lot to think about on the security front. Um, but now speaking a bit about privacy also, and um, will taking all the security measures you have been talking about be enough to mitigate the employer's privacy risks too? Um, I, I think that's hard to say, um, but no, no more hard that, that, than is in ordinary circumstances. As you know, uh, the law requires um, adequate protection, adequate safeguards um, for personal data. Um, and. Uh, and, and that is always going to be a, a relative term. We, you know, we've always known that, so we just really have to to uh, to apply apply that uh, th th these words, these concepts in in, in the new um, circumstances. I think I think the key thing is that, uh, and, and the reason why uh, the law doesn't specify um, any sort of forms of protection um, is that it really does mean that there must be adequate in all circumstances. So whatever the circumstances of your processing, 
the protection's got to be adequate. Um, so that means, obviously, as we've been looking before, um, we, we've got to understand uh, what the risks are, we've got to identify those risks, uh, the privacy risks, and then we've got to put appropriate um, uh, protection, appropriate safeguards and controls uh, around them. I think ultimately it's down to um, accountability. If you, if you can demonstrate that you have assessed these new risks uh, and you've put appropriate proportionate um, measures in place, I think the ICO, well, I know uh, the ICO will clearly um, treat you a great deal better than if you can't demonstrate that. So um, at, at every level, it just makes sense at least to uh, to, to understand the risks. There are some um, some particular uh, privacy risks I want to call out um, here because all this remote, unsupervised uh, access to company systems and data, um, it's going to require um, additional measures, isn't it? Um, and some of these could be regarded as intrusive uh, into employees' private lives. Um, I think managers will obviously need to communicate more closely. As, as Tracy was saying earlier, um, uh, you've, it is a different scenario. You, you, you do have to talk more to, your, um, to, to, to each individual employee. You have to make sure that they're engaged. You have to, um, uh, I, I, I'm, I hesitate, I'm trying to, trying to find the right words to say this, but um, uh, clearly, clearly you want to rely on trust and, uh, and communication. If you don't trust your employees, you shouldn't have employed them in the first place. Um, but th there are temptations uh, uh, w working from home that don't exist in the workplace. Uh, so we have to recognize that. So, so employers and managers are going to have to um, uh, do more supervision, um, uh, checking that work is actually being done. Um, one of the things I've really got to shout out here, and I, I first came across this uh, back in IBM ooh, about 2010, something like that, um, when somebody was thinking of buying some software for, 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 for two perfectly legitimate reasons. But it turned out that this software, um, I won't name it, um, but it was American uh, software. And when I went onto their website, it basically, its, it's headline was basically, do you want to know exactly what every employee is doing every minute of the time, every keystroke? Do you want to know every time they they step away from their, their um, keyboard? Um, want, want, want to know what they're doing? Um, employee spy software, apparently, as, as I put in my post on on, um, on LinkedIn, um, rather like toilet rolls and and, uh, and bread, uh, the, the shelves have been stripped of uh, of employee spy software. Um, so I, I, I would just say, um, give a word of caution. If you, if your company has bought it or is thinking of buying it, um, I would definitely uh, seek legal advice before you turn it on. If you have turned it on, turn it off until you've got legal advice, um, because the use of that sort of stuff might be fine in the states, but um, it's it, it, in certain circumstances uh, it, it may well be, uh, and with certain configurations, it may well be. Um, okay in certain types of organization but generally speaking not a good idea it's going to be um unlawful in a lot of cases so um do, do, do be aware of of overdoing the supervision uh, and surveillance um i think uh, it's also worth um reminding ourselves at this point that, that privacy rights are not not absolute um the one of the recitals uh, i think it's recital four um, don't quote me, but it's pretty early on anyway. It basically says that um, that, that, that data protection rights uh, need to be balanced with other rights and interests. Um, now, that is uh, no different now than it was before, but I think it does make a difference in terms of legitimate interests. Um, so uh, one of the things that I'm uh, just about to do now with my clients, and maybe I'm late with it, and maybe a lot of you have already done this, do a legitimate interest assessment um, to basically to justify the the um, if you like the the extra uh, the additional use of, for example, employees' personal contact details because we might be uh, using their phone their home phone number or their personal mobile to have calls with them. We might be using we might be communicating with them on, on their personal um, uh, laptop you know, to, to to do video calls and using their personal laptop camera uh, for, for um, events like this. Um, this is suddenly using um, employee personal information 
which yes we've had in the past and, we, and we've used in the past but never used to this extent in the past so um, I think uh, we need to uh, do, do those assessments I have no doubt that in uh, the vast vast majority of cases um, the, the, the results will prove that uh, or, or the, the, out, the output will be that um, that the uh, legitimate interests are not outweighed by the um, by the, the rights and freedoms of the individual in in these circumstances not least because uh, it's obviously in the employees interests as well um, to, to, to have a job rather than to be out of a job notwithstanding all the benefits that are being um, being provided so um, uh, yes so from the um, back to the question will the security measures be enough uh, to mitigate the employer's privacy risks to um, on in terms of, of protecting the, uh, the the customer the HR information the information that's being um, uh, processed uh, to, 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 a, to a fairly large extent yes but I think uh, I think it's really the uh, the employees um, privacy uh, rights that we need to uh, see as being an extra thing we're going to take extra measures uh, in addition to the security measures we were talking, talking about earlier, so we are going to do legitimate interest assessment. Um, we we might even might even send out um, a like an updated or or a pro tem a temporary um, privacy notice, just explaining um, how and why and to what extent we're going to be using their personal contact details for um, for, for work management. And I, I think also um, I mentioned the word intrusive uh, earlier that. Um, uh, not everyone is as is as happy as I am in their work. Um, I'm happy in my work because <laughs> I work for my clients, not for any bosses. Um, not everyone is really comfortable every time they speak to their boss, and, and having conversations with their boss when they're sitting in their home um, can make them feel quite vulnerable. So I think it's really important to um, to, to explain to employees that um, this is something that the employer doesn't want to do. Um, it, it's not ideal, but it's just necessary, and, and, and just uh, ask for the um, employees' forbearance uh, and, and patience. Um, uh, it, it's not intended to, to impinge on their privacy, but uh, but we realise that uh, it, it may have. I choose your own words, but you know where I'm going on this. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This makes totally sense. Um, but so finally, what about the employees then? You already mentioned a bit about that. Are their privacy rights and responsibilities affected by the homework, just like you mentioned before? Yeah, I, I do. I think I've, I've largely covered this. Um, yeah. But I think it's worth briefly uh, recapping. I think um, provided the employer communicates well, um, provided the employer is transparent, explains why um, this extra supervision is going on, um, I, I mentioned the, uh, the, the this sort of um, spy software uh, um, and, and to dismiss it, um, but I think that uh, it's perfectly legitimate to uh, maybe to increase the monitoring on the existing um, uh, content uh, content blocking uh, software and um, data loss protection software. The software that basically monitors uh, employees' use of, of um, or access to to uh, the network to, to the internet um, it's the stuff that that, that prevents uh, access to um, pornography and illegal sites and terrorist sites and gaming sites and so on um, so it, uh, it, it may be necessary just to uh, to, to monitor those um, uh, or to use those tools those monitoring tools just a, a, with a bit more um, Bit more focused than, than in ordinary working opportunities or, or ordinary working circumstances but but I think again it's really important to uh, to let people know before you do it and certainly don't do it and don't get don't have managers calling up their uh, employees and saying uh, I see you've just been spent the last 15 minutes uh, on a gambling site um, that, that's that's not a good idea that's going to get you into more trouble and it'll get them uh, if I'm honest um, so uh, I think it's a good idea to remind uh, employees, uh, or if they didn't already know, to tell them that um, that we do have monitoring uh, software that does uh, prevent access to their um, to, to certain types of inappropriate and unlawful sites. Um, uh, and so I say, pr provided uh, provided that uh, employers are transparent and do explain uh, all this, um, then I don't really think uh, there should be a problem with um, the employees' privacy rights. Um, I also think uh, that 
provided employees uh, take the required precautions in relation to their handling of personal information. So now that I'm at home, um, I, I, I might feel uh, and I'm working from home and I might decide, oh, I'd much rather sit on my sofa and, and, and read this spreadsheet of these 500 people's um, financial details rather than sit at my computer for the next hour. Um, I might be tempted to print them off. I, I, I just just make sure employees uh, don't change behaviors to suit their um, their comfort um, when they're home in that kind of way. Um, so to summarize, um, it's clearly important for uh, organizations to perform a, a risk assessment of home working, to put reasonable additional controls in place, safeguards. Um, I think given the likely uh, extent of the use of personal information for business purposes, uh, organizations um, for whom this is necessary, uh, they, they, they should consider doing a, um, uh, a legitimate, legitimate interests uh, assessment, LIA. Um, and I think, to be perfectly honest, I think the rest is just out of common sense. Um, I once, well, I used to tell people quite a lot um, that uh, that privacy is just two things. You just need two things to be a privacy expert. You need common sense, and you need a good moral compass, um, a sense of doing the right thing. Um, of course, we all know it's more than that, and thank heavens it is. Otherwise, none of us would have a specialist job these days. But. Um, uh, it, it, it really is, I think, the best advice anyone, any privacy advisor can give to any individual, any employer, any um, uh, any manager right now is just be sensible, do the right thing, be proportionate. Don't 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 go over the top. Um, one of the examples uh, that, that came up uh, quite a lot recently is uh, whether um, whether uh, a manager or employer should be able to to tell their employees if, if one of their colleagues has, has got uh, coronavirus. Um, the, the ICO uh, actually gives, gives some really good, the, the, the guidance that the ICO has provided seems to be quite slim, but it, in actual fact, it, it really just hits the spot. And it's basically, um, yes, of course, your first priority has got to be for the, the, the health and well-being of, of people. But the chances are, you don't actually need to tell them that it's Jim who's got it. You just need to say somebody in the office has got it. So uh, take care. I think the reality now we've all been pretty much at home now for over a week and soon it'll be two weeks. Um, that, that actual um, uh, you know, the, the, the need to, to, to share that kind of information will reduce anyway. But generally speaking, um, on the subject of, of sharing information, because um, one of the big risks we haven't talked about uh, is is the uh, the risk sharing uh, the, the data sharing risks. Um, generally, the risk has always been perceived about um, sharing too much, but I think there's in times like this there's a real risk of not enough information being shared um, uh, to, to, to enable uh, the government uh, and and the first line services to uh, to really clamp down on this and, and and make sure that the pandemic causes as little damage. Um, to, to people and society as possible. Um, clearly, uh, that, that we've got to do an awful lot of data processing, um, got, to, got to do an awful lot of data sharing. But again, the advice just keeps coming back to this, this common sense, proportionate, transparent um, approach. So those are, my, those are my closing words. In short, be fair, be transparent, and be proportionate. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been a great summary. From uh, you covered the topic of privacy and security in a home working perfectly. I think a lot of companies can take a lot of value from that. So thank you very much. I see that the two next slides we have here is what you actually just spoke about. So it's a, it's a summary after the seminar, after the webinar, we send it out to everyone, to all the participants and the ones who were not able to make it so they can see and read further uh, about the points Simon just mentioned right now. And we come a little bit also to how Pride Tech can help you, how Pride Tech can help you, of course, in general, and also handling um, this delicate situation right now. Um, we from Pride Tech have developed an easy solution in order to support GDPR compliance in companies. Um, so you, first of all, you need to identify the risks and Pride Detect helps you to detect and identify the risks. Afterwards, after you have detected all the risks, you need to define and suggest preventive actions. Also hereby, by knowing the risk in your company and afterwards to define the necessary measures, helps you to also mitigate the risks. 
Prilatect helps you with this, with definitions, suggestions of measures in your company. And the third point would be also monitoring um, all the implementations you made. Um, the data protection is a constant task within your company. You always need to update um, the register of processing activities, your organizational measures. So um, this is also what Product Tech stands for, that you can monitor all the implementations you did in regards of data security. What I love about it is that it's also, it has a lot of different functionalities like a risk assessment, like an impact assessment. Um, the register of processing activities can be easily done. Um, you have like all the technical and organizational measures in your company listed, and you can also see where you should maybe implement some more in order to lower the risk, in order to be safer. So we have it covered widely, um, which overall um, are the segments of GDPR compliance. So um, you can also, of course, try Pridatec in order to take control of your data protection management. And we see that especially in those days, we get a lot of requests and demands because we know that data protection, data privacy is sometimes a topic that is left aside in companies who maybe have to focus on different things. But right now in those times where the people are more calm, maybe have more time to do all those tasks, um, it's a great time to try it. Uh, we have a seven day free trial, so you can, of course, um, check it out whenever you want. And um, meanwhile, after <laughs> um, seeing this, we have a look at the questions we received because, of course, um, we received some from the people who joined our webinar. Let me just open them a second. <coughs> So, so um, yes, first of all, we had some questions, as, uh, special, uh, especially for the coronavirus, but I think, Simon, you already covered this as well before, just to make sure, um, yes, if there is someone working from home hand, he gets the coronavirus now, do, does he have to tell um, the manager? This is the question, and you already said that the manager um, should not tell the employees, especially who has the coronavirus, right? As Simon, I cannot hear you right now, so maybe it's just me. Nope, it is the mute button. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so sorry. So so this is this is where I'm at home. I'm working from home, uh, and I get the coronavirus. Uh, so I call in sick to my manager, and my manager says, uh, "Is it coronavirus? Do I have to tell him? Is that the question?" But uh, because if it is, but, but my my view would be, no, you don't. Um, uh, I not everyone agrees with my take on on um, on on sick notes and, and the rest of it. My 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 view generally is that an employer. Uh, has every right to know whether you're sick um, because various processes then start kicking off around sick pay and um, and, and fit notes and sick notes um, and return to work and so on. Um, but because because they're not a medical um, um, professional, uh, I, I can't see how it can possibly be necessary for uh, a manager or employer to uh, to need to know the exact nature of your sickness. They need to know the expected duration. Um, I think it's fair of them to, to ask if you're okay just from a personal point of view, but um, uh, really for business purposes, they need to know how long you're likely to be off work. Um, and that's kind of it. So uh, certainly if an employer said to me, is it coronavirus? I said, I, I, I would just say, I, I'm sorry, I don't really want to go into what it is. I'm just telling you that I am sick. I am ill. Um, I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking medication or whatever, but um, I, I don't want to go into the details of it. Will be my view. Hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Then we have one other question. It's like um, some people tend to be a little more relaxed with leaving their computers unattended or more importantly unlocked how can you mitigate the risk of an inadvertent access to sensitive data or even manipulation 
if spreadsheets leading to potential loss of data? It, it's, uh, yeah, um, it's difficult. So, so basically, we're talking about um, uh, people using their own uh, devices. If they're using a company device, then various things like um, um, auto auto lock, you know, where, where, where the, um, the screen automatically locks after um, five minutes or whatever, usually 15 minutes of, of, uh, of, of inactivity. Um, that could always be reduced to five minutes or something. It, uh, you know, that could be done centrally. Um, how do you, you, you basically, it's like I was saying earlier, you give them some rules, you give them the house rules uh, drawn from the um, acceptable use uh, policy in part, but also, the, as I said, just, just the practical um, guides that each employee needs to understand that they are not in the secure environment of their office anymore. Um, I, 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 this is a true story. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, it wasn't a colleague of mine, it was a friend of a colleague of mine. Uh, she was working from home one day, lovely sunny day, had the French windows open onto the private garden, went to make a cup of tea, came back, laptop had gone. It had been open and unlocked at the time, which means that uh, although it had um, hold disk encryption, as I understand from the from the story, um, the fact that that the uh, it was actually open, uh, all the thief had to do was just basically keep it going until they could uh, get it powered and and, uh, and prevent um, um, just just strip all the data out of it. So it's it's, it's just really important. Um, you know, yes, people do steal things. Uh, it, it's sad that it happens, um, and it's much easier to steal from somebody's house. As we go into the summer. Um, I think quite a lot more people might end up um, working outside. It's not very easy with a laptop in the sunshine, I know, but it doesn't stop people trying. Um, and the idea of leaving your laptop on your patio table while you go and um, make a cup of coffee uh, is, I, I can just see it happening everywhere, but <laughs> just so many opportunities for some rogue thief who happens to be passing doing his one hour permitted uh, cycle ride, um, deciding to, uh, to help themselves to your laptop. Uh, yeah, of course it's going to happen. You just got to, you, employers just have to um, make sure they get the right messages to employees, and employees have got to step up and just comply with the rules. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, this is all from the questions we have right now. And so again, if there are questions after the webinar, um, you can send them to me to my email address in the second slide. And Simon, Tracy, and I will be more than happy to answer them also later on and um, so far thank you so much Tracy thank you so much Simon for joining for giving us all this very valuable insights um, it was you. really interesting and for all the listeners um, thanks to everyone for joining and um, yes stay safe and stay healthy bye 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 everyone bye